G'day mates, Argsy here. Welcome back to Western Australia. So we're just starting off with the balers, finishing off their last little piece of straw here in field 6. Now you remember we got a lot of this baled last time and collected. Somewhere further down the field, can't see any at the moment, but there's the JCBs are still running around picking up bales. And uh, we've got a truck waiting to be filled up and one already down at the bale cell point. So uh, these guys are just going to carry on and get finished. Uh, they're running as they should and as they were last time, so we're not going to spend any more time focusing on them. We're going to get on to our next task, which is getting some fields spread with lime and getting them ploughed. So uh, obviously we'll be using some automation again, horseplay mainly. Uh, obviously some auto drive courses for getting to and fro, but mainly we'll be using uh, courseplay. So I'll head back over to the yard and we will uh, start getting things set up over there and I'll start to explain how we're going to uh, get things done today. Alright, so here is the equipment I have set up for us to uh, get started with our liming. So there's three parts to the puzzle here. We see the main ingredient is having some spreaders to get the lime on the field with. Uh, the second part here is some loaders. We've got a couple of uh, front loaders on tractors, a wheel loader and a tally handler. So that's to load the uh, spreaders with some lime. And then the third part is one of our trucks here which will be bringing the lime to the field. So uh, we'll get started on getting the lime down to the field and then we'll uh, take the spreaders down, get them set up and the last part will be getting the loaders set up to load the lime into the spreaders. And uh, we're going to do that all with course play. So uh, let's go get some lime sorted. So just over here next to our silo complex, we've gone and placed some uh, silo refill points. We have a lime, a seed, and a fertilizer refill point here. And I've already been through and set this up with auto drive. Uh, I think you should all be, from watching the other episodes, be familiar now with how to do this. But I'll show you what I've set up. We've got a third course there uh, on the very left hand side. If I just drive up here, you'll see we've named a point lime fill for the lime silo, seed fill for the seeds, and the last one down there, fertilizer, fertilizer silo. So now using the refill and deliver auto drive course, if I just pop it back here on this line, we'll uh, be able to tell the truck to refill with lime uh, so we want to be here, we want a lime fill. Over here, lime, field 7 lime dump. Now when the truck gets over there I'll show you how I've set that up. And we want to fill it with lime. I'll turn the course off here. Hit go and he should drive down there under the auger. And start to get filled up. Right, so there we go, we're filling up. Unfortunately the uh, trigger area for these silos is quite large. So the truck thinks he's in the trigger, uh, but which he is, and the lime you can see is going into the back. But uh, the trigger point is actually uh, up the front, so we uh, doesn't look quite right, but it is working. So we'll leave him to fill up, it's going to take a wee while, and I will meet him over at the field shortly. Just while we've been busy getting the truck set up, the uh, balers have all finished. So... Just have a quick look here at how many bales we created. So if we just jump into our stats, 581 bales total. Now remember they are 20,000 litre bales each. So if my maths is correct, we have ended up with 11.6 million litres of straw that we've uh, taken down to, or baled, and will get taken down to the sale point. Now bear in mind, they were 20,000 litres, so if we'd done them at 4,000 litre bales, we would have ended up with 2,900 bales, which would have been a, uh, a lot more interesting to try and manage, and probably a lot more demanding on frame rates. So uh, certainly the variable bale mod, uh, or variable bale capacity mod for uh, doing something like this was invaluable. But anyhow, we'll uh, leave these guys here, we'll go and sort them out later on, put them away, the uh, loading wagons are still floating around somewhere. There's obviously a bale over here they haven't got to yet. 
but we'll leave them to keep going and we'll go and carry on getting the lime underway. Alright, the truck is down here at the dump point. Now it's backing in and I will explain to you in a minute how it is doing this. But it's going to back up here towards the fence and I've defined a point for it to, uh, I'm saying in inverted commas, tip to because I know it's not going to tip um, because there's not a trigger for it to tip into. I'm going to get to a point here, there we go, and ideally it would tip, but uh, we can't tell auto drive to tip to ground. So I'm just going to hop in here, and we'll just need to stop him there. He's uh, turned off, done as much as he can do. We'll just start getting this unloaded. While we do that, I'm going to bring the course up here. And what you'll be able to see is we have a course which goes... From a, I'm going to tweak that little piece there, it got a little bit crooked. But you can see we've got a blue course, so the truck drives in here, goes around what was our uh, truck load course from the mother bin, comes around, gets to the point up here, and then hops in reverse, which is the light blue line, to this reference point, F7 line dump, which is the, you can see, our dump point, and then once we've finished that, would drive out. Now if this was a trigger like a silo or a cell point or um, something like that it would dump automatically but because we're just dumping it on the ground in the field it can't figure that out unfortunately so uh, it would be nice to see in future versions of auto drive the ability to uh, specify a waypoint perhaps as a dump point to we'll do things like this but uh, for now we'll just make do with what we can. We're still at the point where the truck now that we're empty, we should be able to tell it to go off to the line fill, there we go, and go and get filled up. So we'll leave him to go and do another cycle and we'll start working on the next phase which is the spreaders. I've got the first of the spreaders out of the shed, we're just uh, heading down to field 7 here and we're uh, going to get this horse set up for uh, both the spreaders. Now, I was reading on the course play manual, which it seems to be a bit of a new thing that they seem to be writing. The developers of course play seem to be writing a bit of a manual, which you can find through GitHub, uh, which describes how some of these different course options work. And one thing I read on that is when using a multi-tool course, they suggested not starting that in corners, uh, to start it on an edge. They didn't explain why, they did say it could... Um, cause issues starting in the corner, I've never really said I've had an issue but I'm going to heed their advice and we're going to start setting this course up uh, along this edge here. Right so I'm just going to calculate this field edge because I don't believe field 7 has been defined. So there we go, we'll add that field edge. Now what we're wanting is obviously the uh, fertilizing and seeding course there and we'll go to course generation, load field 7 we're going to go around once, we'll uh, start on headlands, we'll go up and down, no point in doing lands because we're using the spreaders, we've got two of those, no need to skip rows or anything like that. Now one thing I do know, with this spreader, when it's spreading lime it has a shorter, narrower working width, and that is 24 meters, so I'm just going to click through here very quickly. Alright, there I've got that down to 24 meters. So that's pretty much all we need to generate our field course. So zoom in up here and let's see what comes out of this. Alright, and as you'd expect, it looks very similar to the combine course for the same field. Just uh, working across in up and down rows rather than using the lands. So if I just head back in here, I'm now going to save this course and we'll call it Field 7 Lime. Redo. Go. Alright, so that's the course saved. Now what I'm actually going to do next is remove that course and I want to record our refill course. Uh, so we need to specify when the spread is empty it needs to get to a point to refill. What we're going to use here is the simple transfer course. Start to finish, point to point. We'll start course recording. Now we're just going to drive along here pretty much in a straight line. Doesn't matter too much get to a point about here. Now this is our uh, refill point, so to define that as the refill point we had a weight point there. 
then we'll drive forward and just start to drive out. Don't have to go very far at all. And stop on that. And that is our Field 7 Lime Refill. We'll call it, yeah, Lime Refill. That should be clear enough. There we go. So, we'll remove that course because we've got them both saved. So we have no course loaded. Now we've made both those courses, I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to load, make sure we're on the fertilizer and spreading option there. Come in here, we're going to load the lime spreader. And then we're going to use the plus button here on the lime refill and append this course at the end. See down the bottom it says append course. Add that. Now we have two combined courses loaded. I'm going to just quickly in here, we'll set this on left. Uh, not too much else needs to be changed. I'm just going to bump the speeds up a little bit, particularly the field speed. Get to a slightly higher setting. Now, the one thing that is critical is we want to put a fill type in here. This obviously needs to be our lime. We only have fertilizer and lime to choose from because that's all this uh, machine can do. And that now has that listed there. Now, these percentages, we want to set the minimum to about 90 or 95 percent. I'm going to go to 95. Now that percentage will become relevant once we start loading the reader with the loaders, uh, but this is at what percentage full does it leave the refill point. I could put it at 100, but uh, I figured if a bucket fills it to 96 percent, there's no point waiting around for that last 4 percent, we'll just send them off and uh, we can start going and getting spreading again. So I think that is about all we need to do now for that. I'm just going to jump in here, if I tell it to start from the first waypoint, press drive course, and he should now head off to the first waypoint, figure out he's empty, and then go and wait at the park point for the refill. So we'll just uh, ride along here for a second and see what happens. Alright, so here we go. He got back over to the start point and realised he had no fertiliser or no lime is now pulled up at the refill point and you'll see there we get the little warning telling us exactly that so uh, we'll leave him there for now and we'll go and get the tractors to come and get started with the uh, loading and just while we get this second load of lime unloaded here you'll uh, see we've got the four loaders there all lined up so uh, once we've got this all emptied out and out of the way we'll be able to start getting the course set up for using the loaders to fill the uh, spreader so I'll just park the truck up here um, send him off again soon to get some more lime but for now I'm going to focus on getting this course set up so I'm going to do it first here in the uh, John Deere and then we'll uh, move through the other tractors and have a look at the different pros and cons for uh, using a different type of loaders for this task. So I'm here in course play now. We are going to use this mode down here, fill and empty shovel. Now uh, we'll just click on there and basically we have to record a course for what we want the tractor to do or the loader or whatever it is we're using. So we're just going to start by recording first. Now I'm not going to use the bucket, I'm not going to fill anything up. What we're doing first is defining where our fill point is. So we drive along here Put a weight point, now that weight point defines the entry or the start of whatever it is we're loading from. Whether it be a stylish bunker, a manure pit, slurry pit, well obviously not slurry, but I'm going to think we're loading up a, a loose product. Uh, and then we need to put one at the end, which defines the back of it. Now we'll be able to hit reverse, because obviously the tractor would be reversing out. And what we want to do now, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit, is we want to perform a three point turn. Here, yeah. stop that uh, reverse, and now we're going to drive forward to where we want to unload. There we go, keep that on far enough forward, yeah, that should do. Now obviously at this point, we put a third weight point here, which is our unload weight point. And then the final step, we reverse again back past our start point 
where we come to a stop in the reverse and then I'm just going to drive forward just a touch and at that point we will uh, stop the course there we've got our three uh, three main functions now before we go any further we have a couple of settings we need to set here this tool here this defines the shovel position so at what stage the position of the front loader or whatever it is we're using is set at the first one is the load position so we obviously want the bucket on the ground we just go in there set it where we want it and then tell horseplay that this is the position for loading next transport so we obviously want the bucket off the ground a little bit not too high but uh, tilted back so nothing falls out there's our transport position thirdly is our pre-unload so basically getting the loader up into the air and getting ready to dump so there now I'm going to go check this one over top of the loader uh, of the seed box fertilizer box I'll get there in the end the right terminology and this is our unload so we'll set the unload position there as that's about as far as we can tip it forward now you can set those anywhere you don't have to be on the course you can set it back in the yard wherever you like but uh we've got those done now that's about the majority of the settings we need to look at uh, down here shovel trigger mode you'd use that if you were trying to fill up out of a silo for example the lime fit lime silos we were using earlier uh, and the other setting I will change is the speed don't want to go that fast that's a little bit excessive in reverse but if we just uh, bump it up a little bit remembering that horseplay even though it says miles is kilometers so 16 kilometers would be 10 miles and uh, we'll just bump that up and bump that up right so I'm just going to save this now F7 lime loaders there and now we put this on first waypoint go drive course we'll see what happens and off the indicators so you can see there that course plays put the bucket down to the transport position we defined and I drive forward up to the pile until it gets to that weight point here it is bucket goes down into the low position now and picks up a scoop of lime perform our three-point turn now it goes into the preload position and should now drive forward to the weight point we had before for unloading there it is and that's tipping in now here's our first problem the front loader isn't high enough to tip in Force plays detected that it's got a little bit of a collision and won't force it down to tip anymore so uh, that explains why I have a uh, high tip bucket on the class so I'm just going to go in here and stop the driver is it and I'll show you this if I I can manually tip the bucket further but obviously it's lifting our front wheels off the ground and wouldn't be something we'd do normally so that's um, obviously the limitation there of using the uh, John Deere with the just a standard front loader you're limited by the height and reach that you get with that I'm just going to uh, jump into the class and uh, show you that with this high tip We don't need to go anywhere, I'm just going to jump straight in here, make sure we're on the right mode, load that uh, lime loaders, here we have that, now quickly go in and set our positions, zoom out a bit so I can see, so there's our loading position, transport position, up and back a little bit, pre-unloading, nice and high, And then finally, zoom out a little bit more, our unload position, if I just have to press the right button, there with the high tip. So there's our unload. Now I'm just going to drive around and put this at the start point, or near to the start point. Leave all those set up incorrectly, just so we can see that course play will get it into the right position. 
Uh, the only other settings was those speeds. Get that 16. So then again, can I get that? There we go. That a little bit 30. And uh, we'll drive the course. So everything's exactly the same as what we'd set up for the John Deere, uh, except for the bucket tip. So we'll uh, keep an eye on this and see how it goes getting into the uh, tip point. Alright, there we go. That high tip bucket obviously makes a big difference. Alright, so we'll leave this uh, guy to finish loading him up. So, uh, or what we missed before. He's back back to the start. And now we'll start moving forward and make another lap of the course. We'll go and grab the other fertiliser spreader, uh, get that set up, and by the time we've done that, hopefully this one's full and off doing its uh, first lap of the field. So here we are in the second of the two spreaders, and I've just gone through and set all the course up. So uh, see down there we've got the two combined courses, we've been through, this is the right hand one, we've added lime in, set that setting there, and uh, tweak the speeds just to make it a little bit faster. Uh, but other than that, I think we have everything correct. So we'll press start at the first waypoint and we'll see what happens here there we go he's gone into his lane he's tried to spread realized he's empty and now pulling up into the refill point and has detected the other spreader is parked in front of him so i was going to wait for that one to be full so uh once he's done we should get a bit of a swap over and what i'll do after that is we'll actually grab one of the other vehicles to uh, handle the refill. Right so while those two keep on getting loaded I'll get the wheel loader all configured and set up to take over from the uh, class loader in just a second. Right so there we go the first spreader is on his way to go and start. I'm gonna quickly get in and stop this guy before he puts a load in. There we go. Move him out of the way for now. And uh, we've got the wheel loader all configured, ready to go. So we'll uh, jump in there and get this underway. Alright, so we're back into the wheel loader. We're at the first point of the course. And uh, we'll set him going and let course play take over to see how this goes for refilling. Now, obviously, immediately visible is the issues course play has with the... Uh, Articulated vehicles, we experienced it with the quad track and the 9RX running the grain carts. Uh, so it's been a bit of a struggle there, wiggling around. But uh, it gets reasonably well straightened up to get the lime in the bucket, and it actually does quite a good job following the reverse course. I'm not quite sure why course play can't uh, drive a wheel loader in a forwards direction as well as it can in a backwards. And even now, pulling into where it needs to uh, unload into. So here we go, there's the wheel loader. Now the benefit here is the size of the bucket. Uh, I think it will fill the spreader in two and a half scoops, I think. Just uh, watch here again. Alright, so while the wheel loader might be able to take the uh, biggest capacity, it might not be the fastest, just uh, by the nature of how it wiggles around, getting to and fro. There we go, two buckets, and if I uh, jump out there and have a look on the spreader, 82% full. So, uh, another bucket, and he'll be off to go and uh, start on their spreading of the field. Alright, so the spreaders have headed off. We had a uh, little bit of an issue, I think, with the way that the loader was detecting the line and where to fill from, and it uh, kind of did a funny wobble and ended up bumping into the spreader and pushing it off the course which then <laughs> caused it to go and start driving. So that's uh, not to worry, we'll, uh, we might make a little bit of a tweak and just try and smooth that loading course out, just fine tune it a little bit more but hopefully that's enough to have given you a good idea on how using uh, loaders can be set up in course play. Uh, obviously I'll show you with the tally handler, I'll get that set up for the next time around. So. Uh, you might just jump back in here, dump this little bit of lime out that's in here, and uh, we'll get things set up for when they need to come back for a refill. Alright, 
right here comes the first of our spreaders back for a refill we've got the uh, class scorpion here set up ready to go so we'll press drive and by the time the uh, spreaders got into position which won't take long at all we will be all ready to go so, uh, obviously the main difference with the tally handler can obviously extend the boom and I have set the uh, pre-unload position to be a little bit extended uh, and obviously the four wheel steer can make it a little bit more maneuverable the downside uh, you can't use too big a bucket and uh, there's a risk that the tally handler would tip forward if, uh, particularly when it's got that weight up and the boom's extended so hopefully I haven't pushed the limits too far with it we'll just wait and see how it goes here to get to the uh, great point to dump into seems to have done pretty well There we go, so that's, uh, that's the tally handler all set up and going. So we're now, uh, you see our other spreader coming around in the background there. So they'll be here soon, waiting for a refill. Uh, it's really just a little bit of a trade-off between reach, stability and capacity. Uh, the tractor is obviously the smaller of the options in terms of capacity, uh, but probably the most stable in terms of driving. Uh, the wheel loader, obviously the biggest capacity, but not as stable with the turning and things like that. And then lastly the tally handler, which is kind of I think the best of both worlds. Although it does have these issues, which we've uh, encountered on a couple of them now, with it getting a little bit confused with those points. So, just like it has there. So I might just bring it back. wobble its way from the next closest point. Well once these two are refilled and he's uh, not going to go past here because we're in his way. And see how much uh, more lime he's got in there. Alright we'll just uh, stop the driver for a second. Take over to spread this little piece and uh, and if we go from next closest waypoint, he should take off and finish this off himself until he's ready for a refill. Things are going reasonably smoothly here. The uh, still got the tally handler going. It seems to have handled things the best, although kind of prove me wrong here. I'm not quite sure why he's trying to get to an unload point. Anything in there? Nothing in there. Right, here we go. He's figured out where he needs to go. Now, got the second one there waiting, so we'll be off again soon. What I've got over here is uh, thought we should make a start on ploughing in here as well. Otherwise, uh, we will never get anywhere. So we've got three of the John Deere plows, uh, one each on the 9RT, a quad track, and the 9RX. So uh, we're going to set them up on course play and get them started on uh, plowing in here. So following through with the lime, got spread over quite a reasonable width already, and uh, the lime spreaders will certainly be a lot faster than the 
uh, tractors will be. So we'll leave these guys to carry on going. Another 10 grand of lime just gone into the truck, so he'll be here again soon to unload, uh, which is good. So let's go and get these uh, plows up and running. I'm going to start off in the 9RT, for no reason other than it was the first one I got here. Uh, you'll just see the spreader on his way off there again to carry on moving. Uh, so this is obviously a pretty basic course to set up. We are uh, using, look on this one here, field work. Uh, so we'll just go through and do some course generation here. So field 7. Uh, I'm going to go round twice. And I know we've got two um, or three machines. And going round twice will be quite big. But because I'm going to start them on up and downs rather than headland passes. Uh, I want to keep them clear of the lime. And want to have the edge of the field done last. So multiple tools, there we've got three, 5.4 meters wide and we're not going to skip rows, we will just go and leave them on up and down I think. I think that's probably going to be the best option and we're going to start our work on the up and down rows. Let's uh, generate and see what happens with this one. Alright, so there's the course started. Uh, obviously the biggest difference is that the last lines, the orange and red ones, are on the outside rather than on the inside. Uh, but all looks good to me, as you would expect. So we'll just go through, we'll, uh, if we go any further, we'll save this. F7 flowers. Easy one to remember. Right, so we'll put this man on the left hand side. Uh, we don't need any offsets. We will look at the speed. Speed shouldn't be an issue because it'll be governed by the equipment. Uh, vehicle convoy will activate that. And we'll just leave it at 100 meters just to make sure they stay clear. And start at first waypoint. So uh, we'll set this guy off and going. And we'll go and jump into the quad track to uh, set him up the same. All right, so there's the quad track all set up. Like I said, these ones are very easy to do. Not a lot to them. Make sure we have the field work and load the course. And specify which lane, and that is pretty much it. Vehicle convoy. Uh, other than that, I don't believe there's anything else to worry about. First waypoint, and off he goes now too. We'll just ride along here with the uh, 9RX and follow him down to where they're starting from. Obviously we'll see the other two will have already started in front of us. Alright, there's the quad track just getting unfolded. I'm going to drive off before we catch the plows, just in time. And uh, the 9RX is just waiting to get that 100 metres behind. And there we go. Alright, so we are now getting the field ploughed after getting the lime started. Uh, so hopefully, all going to plan. Combined width of about 36 metres versus the combined width of the two spreaders of 48, so won't be any chance of catching up. Uh, but we'll crack into getting this done and uh, see how it all works out in the end. Busy little part of the field just here. A couple of plows. The uh, spreader trying to get back to unload before we get there. Other spreader down there spreading. And uh, I just saw the truck. There's the truck coming in to bring another load of lime. And the tally handler sitting there ready and waiting to fill the next spreader. So. We'll uh, better jump out now and go and help that truck get tipped off. But uh, things seem to be running pretty smoothly. I'm not going to complain about what's happening at the moment.
Right, well we've got everything underway. Got the plows in the background you can see going. The uh, alley handler still seems to be doing a pretty good job of refilling the spreaders. Uh, has got itself a little bit tangled up on a few occasions, but nothing that a quick little uh, stop driver and restart hasn't helped fix. So uh, I think now that we've got all that up and going, see the uh, quad track coming down there. Uh, now we've sort of shown you how to use the uh, fill an empty shovel mode in course play and that we've actually started getting a decent amount of lime and, and made a good start on the ploughing. I think I'll wrap things up here. I hope that uh, this has taught you a little bit more about course play. Learned a little bit more about what you can and can't do, particularly with the uh, fill an empty shovel mode. Uh, obviously some of the other course play pieces aren't too difficult, although the uh, resupply or refill for a uh, spreader in this instance is uh, quite a nifty little trick. And that could be used with any number of different things. It could be a slurry spreader, a manure spreader, could be a cedar. Um, you could refill from parking next to a uh, truck with some grain in it, or seed in it, sorry, or next to a liquid fertilizer tank, or uh, even from one of the silos. So this uh, horseplay course that we had for the refill could have actually driven all the way to the refill silos and refilled it that way. But uh, I thought this was a good opportunity to show off how this uh, fill and empty shovel works. So we'll wrap things up there. Thank you very much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.